My girlfriend, 26F, mentioned my size in an argument and I, 23M, feel really bad about it. Basically my girlfriend, 26F, and I, 23M, were arguing and eventually she mentioned that I had a small size, 12.4 cm4, 88 inches. That really hurted me. I always try to communicate to know what she likes and what she doesn't. Also I'm quite good with other ways of pleasing. I always make her orgasm those ways and according to her and her body language, those aren't faked. But even with that she mentioned my size and hurted pretty bad my self-esteem. I said nothing and left her house. It's been two days and she's been sending me messages apologizing and saying that she didn't meant to say it and she misses me. I've been ignoring them all. I know it was the heat of the moment and she could have actually didn't meant to say it, but I'm really hurt, mainly because she knows I'm not really comfortable with that. Also I never use her body to shame her or anything. I always try to make her feel better about her insecurities so this really feels like a sucker punch in the guts. I don't know what to do and I'm sure that if I get back I'm not gonna feel the same knowing she probably would prefer someone bigger or that even the size it's a matter for her independent of me or other ways to please her. Blank. Update. Before the update I want to thank everyone who took their time to help me and even though I didn't respond to any comment I want to let you know that I did read every single comment. Yes the, it's not hurted, it's hurt, English is not my first language but thanks for letting me know that mistake, and, it's quite small though, as well. Now the update. I texted her back saying that I wanted to talk with her, face to face. I went to her home and I explained her that I never expected her to tell me that and that it really hurt me. I was always being supportive with her insecurities and always treated her kind, never said anything hurtful, intentionally or unintentionally. She said that she regretted what she said and didn't meant to say it, that regardless the size the sex was great. I told her that if she truly didn't meant it she wouldn't have said anything at all in the first place and that now I wasn't comfortable being with her, especially knowing that she may use personal attacks again in the future or that she might even cheat for sausage reasons, and that during sex I'd probably won't be able to feel comfortable either, knowing that she would prefer someone bigger. She disrespected me and that for not meant to say it she just regretted some hours later. If she wanted someone bigger then I was sure she could find one. I told her I wasn't willing to keep with the relationship. She insisted in that she would never say something like that again and that she really regrets it. I told her again that if she said it, she thought it, she disrespected me and I wasn't comfortable with the relationship anymore. I wished her the best and I get the fuck out there, I'm still feeling quite bad but I'm trying to not focus on that, keep going with life and I'll try to find someone better. Some clarifications for some comments. It's not that I'm insecure about it. I accepted my genetics as some time ago. Also I have other skills to compensate, so I let it be. It's just that I don't want to think much about it. I don't feel comfortable talking about it because I think the insecurities might return. What hurt my self-esteem and what was actually painful is that the one who said it wasn't a random asshole. It was my partner, someone who I loved, respected and cared about. About the measurements, when you're small or average, you keep going, till the last millimeter, never give up. Every little measurement that you can add without lying matters lol. The argument wasn't heated or about sex or someone's body, it was personal so I'm not going to explain why it started or what was about, but for those who are curious it wasn't anything bad or related to sex, don't worry. All this said, thank you everyone, from the comments to the supportive messages. Love you all and have a fantastic week, you deserve it. I don't know what to do and I'm sure that if I get back I'm not gonna feel the same knowing she probably would prefer someone bigger or that even the size it's a matter for her independent of me or other ways to please her. An understandable concern. As is being with someone who resorts to saying things during arguments meant to serve no other purpose than to hurt you as much as she can. I'll never understand why people bring up size, height, or weight etc. in an argument. It's a stupid ad hominem attack intended to hurt you. She made that comment out of pure malice. Dump her. That is significant other disrespectful and a low blow. You can't have a relationship with someone who doesn't respect you. She said it because she meant it. She took something you were the most insecure about and she used it against you during an argument to try to dig the knife deeper. Sorry doesn't fix anything when you do something like that. How are you supposed to believe she's content and happy if she's going to degrade you over an argument? She doesn't deserve you man. I think you're right to ignore her. What she said affected your self-esteem. You deserve to enjoy yourself in the bedroom and not worry about what she is thinking. She said it to hurt you and proved she doesn't deserve you. If I'm not mistaken, that's well within normal range for a penis. But your girlfriend is off the charts mean. 
That attack was cruel and I can't imagine it hasn't poisoned your relationship beyond repair. I am so sorry someone you should have been able to trust did this to you. It's absolutely awful. I hope she gets uncontrollable diarrhea at a formal event. Sorry this happened. If she said the words then she thought them before they came out of her mouth. She meant them. My fiancé, 28M, and I, 27F, were being robbed at knife point, and he ran away and left me. This happened about three months ago, and I've tried to be reasonable and put it past me, but I'm really struggling. I've been told what he did was reasonable, makes sense, etc. But I keep coming back to that moment of total abandonment and fear when I realized he'd run. I just feel completely alone around him now. We were walking home from a work function at a bar at around 1 a.m. Neither of us had drunk that evening, so we weren't even slightly tipsy. Two guys across the street from us crossed over and approached us, asking if we knew where such and such a street was. As fiancé turned around to point out where the street was, one of the guys pulled out a knife and told us to stop moving and to give him all our shit, phone, wallet, etc. I was surprised by how calm I was in the moment, and told them I needed to reach into my coat pocket to get my phone. As I was doing that, the guy pressed the knife against my ribs as warning because I guess he was worried I had a gun, even though that's pretty unlikely in my country. When this happened, my fiancé bolted. It took me a bit to even realize he'd left me, and when I realized that he'd run, I was certain I was about to get badly hurt or die. Fortunately, the thieves seemed to get kind of spooked by him getting away and just hurried me up. They took my phone, bag, with my purse with all my money, cards, personal effects, necklace, worth like 10 bucks, and legged it. The whole ordeal from start to finish took maybe five minutes. I was kind of in shock and wandered off back up the street, heading back towards the bar, not even really thinking. A few minutes later, my fiancé found me and told me he called the police, who arrived about 10 minutes later. I found out that fiancé had run about a block away, calling emergency services as he ran. We were both okay physically, except for a tiny bit of broken skin on my ribs where they'd pressed the knife. My fiancé says what he did made sense, that if he'd hung around, and it turns out they'd wanted to hurt us or worse, we'd both be fucked because no one else would be around to call the cops or an ambulance. That he wanted to be alive and able to help in case something happened to me. He also says that by running away, the thieves didn't want to hang around any longer than necessary, which is true, which might have saved me. His mum agrees and has praised him for not being an idiot but my own mother has quietly told me she thinks he's a coward for abandoning his wife to be, but she also has very old school beliefs about gender roles. Fiancé asked me not to tell our friends exactly what happened, because he says they wouldn't understand his actions unless they were there. My own thoughts are that, by running away, he potentially significantly decreased my chance of survival. I'm only about 157 centimeters, 5 feet 2 inches, and 51 kgs, 110 pounds. He's 178 centimeters, 5 feet 10 inches, and 75 kilograms, 165 pounds. The two guys were about his size. They would have been able to easily overpower, subdue me, but my fiancé there would have made it 2v2. Although we would have still been at a disadvantage, them still having a knife and size advantage, and not left me completely at the mercy of two criminals who mug couples at night. I also wonder, what would have happened if him leaving me had given them the courage to do something worse? I mean, I don't think they would have they seemed pretty strung out, interested in valuables and cash only but what if? I look at him and wonder, do I even want kids with him? If I did have a child with him, would he abandon him or her in a dangerous situation because it was the smart thing to do? I've lost a lot of attraction to him. He accuses me of wanting to use him as a meat shield just because he's a man, and that what he did was smart and not the machismo stupidity I wanted, that could have gotten us both killed. I didn't want him to try to fight them. I just wanted him by my side. Which I guess is selfish, because it was a dangerous situation. I don't feel safe around him anymore, which I used to. I'm even scared of the dark again, despite him lying in bed right next to me. As I'm typing this, I kind of feel like Lex in Jurassic Park, after being ditched by the lawyer, he left us. He left us. Stupid thing to add, but I keep thinking of that scene. I don't know what to think. He doesn't want to see a counselor because, again, he says they wouldn't understand the situation unless they'd experienced it themselves. We fortunately don't have a wedding date set, so there's no immediate pressure of marriage. Please help. Too long did not read. My fiancé ran away and left me to face two muggers by myself. 
He says it was the smart, logical thing to do, but I can't get over how abandoned I felt in the moment, and I've lost a lot of regard for him. I understand why you feel the way you do. I think I would feel the same. Like I am sorry we are together in his thing called life, to me his action seems extremely selfish. You could have been raped or killed and he just ran. Maybe this is universe telling you that maybe he isn't the right one for you. I would maybe have some sympathy for him if he apologized and admitted he panicked, but his acting like this was a smart decision is infuriating. You both should have stayed, handed over what you had then called the police after. Running could have, spooked, them into kidnapping or killing you, and you're insanely lucky they just left. He needs to admit that he bailed on you to save himself and work with a therapist on understanding why and how he can better handle a crisis in the future. Wow who knew that acting like a bitch and leaving your fiancé in a dangerous situation and running away will make your fiancé less attracted to you. Of course you aren't as attracted to him. He proved himself to be less of a man than you thought. I want you to imagine that you have children together. He and the children get jumped. He runs away leaving the children to the mercy of the muggers, killers, rapists, then justifies his actions with the same logic that he used on you. Is this the type of man that you see as a life partner and father? Hello, and thank you for your submission. Please take a moment to review the rules listed in our sidebar. For further guidance, please see our wiki. This is a bot message. I cannot respond to any comments. Please mod mail us with any questions. I am a bot, and this action was performed automatically. Please, contact the moderators of this subreddit, message, compose, to equals, r, relationship underscore advice, if you have any questions or concerns. How does the wood safety briefing go in bear country? You don't have to be faster than a bear, just faster than your friends, be ready to run next time yuck. At least he didn't push you into them and then run. I think your concern is valid. But hey, this is one of those, masculinity is bad until a spider's on the wall, right? Dog before new baby? My husband and I are butting heads ATM because our eight-week-old son has a severe allergy to our dog. It is rare but doctor said his upper respiratory congestion is caused by pet dander. He has been tested for viruses, had an x-ray, and we have cleaned our home from top to bottom to ensure there are no other contaminants that could be affecting our baby. However, despite our diligence he has been unable to breathe well on his own without constant nose suction, wheezing, sneezing, and elated breathing for at least a month. With every exposure to our family dog his symptoms get worse. My husband has an unhealthy attachment and vice versa with our dog already so I knew this was going to be a difficult topic. We have tried even keeping the dog outside but he sheds like crazy and hair and dander make their way in on his hands clothing and tracked in through our lanai and into the home. I have tried insisting on changing clothes and hand washing after every interaction but to no avail. It is oversighted by my husband and so is consistent cleaning to ensure a clean environment. I have tried negotiating several different tactics but none are working. Now my husband is choosing our dog over our son and says that he just won't touch our son in order to keep the dog. Which is out of his own selfishness because this is not easy for the dog either. Mind you he never walks or plays with our dog and surely doesn't clean up after him and now all of a sudden the dog is more important. While I have empathy, I cannot justify his choice. I feel that he needs a better home at this point to give him a better life and our child but I'm the bad guy at this point. Not sure what to do here. Too long did not read. Husband is choosing family dog over infant son while son suffers and so does the dog. Edit. We have had the dog for several years and I am severely allergic as well. Same symptoms as baby but with hives, probably why baby is allergic as well. I have made accommodations for him, like washing my hands and taking medication daily because this is not the dog's fault. I've never wanted to rehome him. I have played and fed and have had an attachment also. I do still have a reaction even while taking medication but have learned to cope. If I thought we could keep the dog and manage, I would, I already have this long. As far as I'm concerned my son comes first and he cannot take medication much less blow his nose. I have stayed up every night worried about SIDS because of the congestion. I think your husband and the dog need another home. You are not the bad guy at all. You sound like you have the dog's best interests at heart as you know he will have a better life somewhere else and that it is not fair for him to stay somewhere where he will always be pushed out in order to protect your son. Your son comes first. Stick to your guns. I think your husband is being incredibly selfish and isn't putting anyone but his own best interests at heart. It seems like you have three choices. Get rid of the dog. Get rid of your son. Get rid of your husband. 
Tell your husband to choose. Tell your husband he is a father now and needs to start acting like it. If the dog is causing problems for his son the dog goes. Period. I can't even imagine wanting to put a dog ahead of my son. That is just crazy. Is there a close relative who could take the dog? I can understand not wanting to give up a family member that would be agonizing. You're describing my nightmare situation, but I know that my aunt would take my dog in an instant, and so would my parents. My sister would probably be an option in a pinch, too. Do you have anyone like that, so you can still keep the dog, in the family, so to speak? It might be that in a few years your son can have allergy shots and be able to tolerate the dog once more. That would be great, but the dog can't live there in the meantime. This is nuts. Your son could die. The idea that your husband will just no longer touch your child is bonkers. I'm trying to give him the grace of newborn exhaustion that he even suggested it. Eventually, your child will start moving around on his own. It's impossible to keep him from the dog. Can you rehome the dog with friends or family? A neighbor, so your husband could still see him? Sounds like you chose a very childish and selfish man to get a baby with. How do his parents, and maybe siblings, think about his actions? I have tried insisting on changing clothes and hand washing after every interaction but to no fail. It is overnighted by my husband and so is consistent cleaning to ensure a clean environment. He clearly doesn't even love the kid enough to try and be a responsible father, so honestly, this is one of those cases where you need to very seriously consider if this is the person you feel comfortable raising a family with. The safety and well-being of the kid are at stake here. You and your son need to move out. Before you both go into anaphylaxis shock. I love dogs. More than people. But this is a hill to divorce on. And get him to admit in text that the dog's more important than your child's life to get full custody with no visitations. I, 24M, found out my wife, 22F, has been cheating. So about a month ago I found out my wife of four years has been having an affair with a close male friend that I've been jealous of for our entire relationship. I'd been suspicious of her for a while because she started being protective of her phone even though I don't ever check it. She was asleep and I went through and found dirty messages between them. We separated for a couple of days and met with a third party present, which she didn't like, to ensure that neither one of us did anything crazy or got into a big argument in public. She lied to me, swearing on out son's life that the affair had only been going on for a few weeks. Then she changed her story to a few months, and ultimately she admitted that it had been going on for just over a year, beginning at the end of the month after our son was born. She only admitted it to me after I wanted to look through her phone too. Initially I was intent on divorcing her, but after a few days I decided to stay with her and try to work things out because I do still feel like I love her. She said she started the affair because she felt like I no longer wanted her intimately which I understand partially because my sexual drive is a lot lower than hers. I'm not exactly sure why but we did stop having sex as often as she'd like. I take responsibility for that aspect of our relationship. As I said earlier it's been about a month and things are better between us. She seems happier than she was before I found out, but I'm having a hard time forgiving and forgetting. It's especially been hard trying to trust her, or anything she says because of how much she lied, and for how long. I guess I'm just wondering if anyone thinks I can possibly salvage this marriage or if I should just move on like my close friends are telling me to do. I've been with this woman for seven years, since high school, and I planned out a future for us. I just don't know what to do. I don't know if I'm able to trust her again, or move past this whole thing but I don't know what my life will be like without her in it. You are 24 years old. Your life hasn't even started. Get a DNA test on your son pronto and go from there, but regardless of that, this marriage is over. She doesn't want to be your wife. She doesn't want to build a life with you. She has proven that again and again. Get a lawyer and start the process. She made the decision to blow up the relationship. Within a month if giving birth. How did she have time to get in Q relationship? Many women are not ready for sex that early. I would DNA test the child to make sure they are yours. This was going on at least emotionally longer than you think. She is not going to stop cheating. You had to investigate the cheating to find out about it which means she does not regret the affair. If she regretted it she would have come to you about it, she only regrets getting caught. She repeatedly did not tell the truth when you confronted her. She blames you for her betraying you and treating you like garbage. She will cheat again and only get better at hiding it from you. Divorce and paternity test. Stop reading Reddit and start calling an attorney. She swore on your son's life and lied with it. 
This is why marrying teenagers is a really really bad idea. Especially if you're just barely not a teenager yourself. You're barely in you damn twenties. I hate saying this but leave her. If you stay she'll lose more respect for you the little she had to chest in the first place. But before you do anything get a paternity test and regardless of the results file divorce papers before her. Believe me, it'll help. Also a male friend I've been jealous of our entire relationship. See that's your fault. Not her cheating but making yourself seem lesser than him in some way. I bet she knew you were jealous of him. You can never do that sort of thing around your so, ever. They'll start thinking they have something you don't and want it. I'm not excusing her actions or saying why it happened. Just explaining the dynamic. Move past her. You deserve better king.